I'm here with Mary Hetmansberger, and Mary is an author and designer, and Mary is so excited to have you here for Found Objects. Well, thank you. Yes, you just find this rusty, rusty old stuff and turn it into magic. I do, I do. I always have my eye on the ground. <laughs> I bet you do. What do you, where do you get started with these things? Well, the, the main thing that you have to remember, I think a lot of people are picking up a lot of stuff and playing with them, mm -hmm. and I think there's a, a few rules that I like to go by, and one is, Always make sure that what you're picking up is not maybe lead or a, a, you know going to be a problem for making jewelry or putting it next to your skin. And even with rust, there's some, you know, you get a lot of flaking and you need to be careful with it, especially so, when handling it. So you're going to show us some safe ways to handle it and I am. turn it into jewelry and also some patinas. I am. I am. Um, the the rust. You know, on some things, it's not a huge issue. Mm -hmm. On other things, that it, it, you know, you may not even be able to use it as jewelry. So the first thing I always do is sort of look at the look at the pieces and try to figure out, you know, are they going to even hold up for jewelry? And that's a that's a big thing. Like on this piece um, here that I'm going to show you, this one's really solid. It'll hold up. We can do anything with this piece. This one's a little bit more tenuous. Got some holes in it, so you need to be careful. This might be a good piece to put on the back of or on the front of something else, like a nice piece of copper. Okay. Um, and then that way you won't have to worry about it falling apart. But whatever piece you're using, what I always do is I start out with steel wool. And I, I do this outdoors, and I even do it with a dust mask. Um, rust is little flakes of metal. Particulate. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to get it in your lungs. So you want to wear a dust mask. You want to wear eye protection. And I even wear ru rubber gloves um, or, you know, a, a, some sort of safety gloves. And what you're going to do is you're going to clean off the surface. And then after I get all the flakes, I actually take just an abrasive cleaner and a green scrubby and I just clean it again. Let it dry. And you do that underwater? I do it underwater, yeah. And I'll, I'm, I'm going to really clean off any particles that are left on the rust or on the piece of metal and get it ready to be used then. So you're basically just taking away any flakes? I am. I am. And the other thing that, that helps is if you're going to put on, let's say if I'm going to put paint on this, then my paint is going to not flake off either. So that's right. a really good thing. So you're to, attaching it to the base. Right. And uh, we'll move this, but let me, let me go a little bit further here. You can also do the same exact thing when you're using um, any of the kind of patinas. Like if you're using a green patina that is going to uh, you know, react with copper, mm -hmm. then what happens is that you get this really flaky green surface. And it's great, but I don't know if you can see, it can actually, sometimes it'll flake off. You can off. rub some of it away. So this is a piece that you found that may have looked textured, like the rusty pieces you showed well, us, and actually, then you added the patina? Actually, this one is just a plain piece of copper. So this is oh. a patina that I've, or this is a piece of copper, threw the green patina on, and then it reacted. Now, once I have that, and once I'm ready to use my rusted piece, I'm going to spray it with a matte fixative, or you can actually do like a, a sealing wax that will... Um, that will, you know, will make sure that everything is going to stay put. The the matte fixative is the same kind of stuff that they use for like charcoal drawings. So you spray it on and it holds all those particles onto the surface. Okay. So so you first you clean it, then you polish you clean it, it with the. Well, you use the steel wool first, right? You use the steel wool first. Now this is a good example of. You know, do I want to change this at all? Probably not, because all I did with this, I cleaned it with the steel wool, it and it shines right up. So mm -hmm. depending on your metal, if it's steel or if it's something that, you know, isn't going to go any further, you're still going to have the rusted surface. Now what about with a surface like this where it's just slightly tarnished or has that natural patina? Would you spray that? Or you know, it, it kind of depends. depends. If you want to, you know, sort of, if I wanted to keep it more shiny, yeah, I'd probably go ahead and spray that. Mm -hmm. I'd probably seal that with the wax. As far as this goes, I may let it just, you know, continue to kind of corrode and, and uh, patina. The thing of it is, is that some of the things that patina can be, can fall apart, or I mean, not patina. Th some of the things that start to rest can literally mm -hmm. fall apart and so corrode. If so it's you don't something want it that to. you want to preserve, then mm -hmm. you might be waxing right, it or right. matte fixative. Yeah, or the surface of it. So even all of these surfaces, these are just torch-fired pieces of copper. And on these pieces, I want to do the same thing. I want to. You're stopping the process. I'm going to stop that process. I'm going to stop that process. This is an interesting piece. This I've taken, and this is a silver. It's got a lot of layers, and on the on the inside layer, this is a piece that I found that was rust that was corroded or not 
occurred. It was green on one side, and then on the other side, it was actually rusted. So I, I really made a point to kind of work on that rust and bring it out a little bit and shine it up. And so I've got two, basically a reversible necklace, and the green is really subtle in there. You can just kind of catch it certain ways, so yeah, I kind of like that. What a great way to preserve items that you find. You can really incorporate that into your work. It's kind of fun. This piece here, this is a, an old nail I found, and I want to point out this piece over here. This necklace? Yeah, this necklace. This actually, if you can see it underneath, I'll turn it around a little bit. If you can see it, it's actually an old nail I found. So I kind of, you know, I've kind of hid it underneath the silver, but then turned around and did the stitching on the top. Making magic with found objects. Thanks, Mary. <laughs> I can't wait to see your next book. And coming up next is Melanie Brooks with a segment we taped earlier on using paper ephemera for jewelry making.